Hey, and we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake, and today we're talking about Evil West. Now, this is a new game from Flying Wild Hog. Uh, it's a Polish development studio. They're the makers of the Shadow Warrior series. Now, we were interested in this one right from the jump because this is straight up like a traditional linear third person action game. Some people might call it old school, but this concept isn't really that old. And these games are still out there, but we just don't see as many of them as we used to. But it harkens back to the PS3, Xbox 360 era where it felt like we had a new Dante's Inferno every other month. You know, just a simple straight up game. No side quests, no RPG stats or like substantial loot. Just like a straightforward game where you hop into a level that you play from beginning to the end and on to the next with cutscenes and boss battles and that's about it. And uh, from that and just like the general over the top video gamey style of this game, the characters, the story, this thing just feels like a game from the PS3 360 era. And I don't mean technically or graphically, I mean like in the entire experience. And I mean it in a good way. Evil West is pretty refreshing if you're into this type of thing. The modern gamer may not be as into it or even like a really picky gamer, but it's a pretty cool game. Now, Evil West is set in this alternate history version of the Wild West. Uh, you might call it the Evil West. Ah, okay, all right, I'm sorry. Uh, you play as this gruff cowboy man, Jesse Rentier, who is uh, like a cowboy version of the over the top Hugh Jackman style Van Helsing. You're just this like beast of a dude with a bunch of cool early tech gadgets gadgets that you use to take on vampires and creatures of the night. You're actually part of a specialized government agency called the Rentier Institute, uh, tasked with taking on these horrors and I guess protecting the United States. Jesse's father is like a Civil War veteran who helped found the Institute and is a man of science who embraces sci-fi, steampunk, and electricity type stuff to fight the bad guys, where Jesse himself is more of just kind of the gunslinger adventurer type. And along with them, you come across a pretty decent cast of characters. There's the nerdy comic relief engineer guy, there's the doctor lady, there's the gruff old man veteran partner, among others, and there's kind of like an outcast in the vampire world who is resorting to new methods to get a leg up on the Institute in the hopes of preserving the dying vampire race and ultimately dominate the world, and that sets up the bad guy and the threat. But it's all goofy stuff, really. The game doesn't take itself too seriously, in a good way. You know, it's a little spooky and gross and gory when it wants to be, and it's also over the top and kind of celebratory of how dumb it is, too. It just embraces the weird wackiness, and it works pretty well. It's kind of like if The Order 1886 wasn't grim and serious. It clearly loves history and just wants to get weird with it, and it works well enough. Now, you're facing off against vampires, but also tons of other things. Werewolf-like creatures, these gross, almost like leech zombies that the vampire use big heavy monster guys and human vampire followers. Uh, despite the story setup, it doesn't necessarily feel like an all vampire affair, which did kind of bum me out as a vampire fan. I mean, they're there, but it also is just way more of a full spooky creature gallery. And I, I just wanted more bloodsuckers. That's really a personal nitpick. That being said, I do think they did a really good job coming up with just some gross, nasty stuff overall. And man, you do kill a lot of gross, nasty stuff. <laughs> the main way you interact with this game, with this world, is punching and shooting stuff. And the combat is definitely new God of War inspired, like with the camera angle and stuff, but uh, with guns and science mixed in. Jesse has a lot up his sleeve in terms of combat tools, and the game keeps adding stuff as you go fairly consistently. So I won't share all of it to save you some of the discovery, but you'll get the main gist here. You fight with a massive electrical gauntlet on your arm and that's the basis of it. You could do melee attacks and combos, uh, an uppercut uh, that pops up enemies in the air and then you can hit them more while they're in the air as kind of a juggle. Or you can hold the uppercut button to jump up and kind of volleyball spike the enemies into other enemies or environmental hazards that like blow up. Now you can also use 
is your trusty revolver that you can fire into enemies at any time uh, with enemies either on the ground or in the air. And you can hold the trigger to fire a bunch of rapid fire shots if you want. Uh, with the left trigger, you can fire long range with a repeater rifle. Uh, and with certain ranged enemies, you can time a perfect shot right before they shoot to do bonus damage, like say pop a flying bug that's gonna spit venom or blow off a gunslinger's hand. Uh, you have a dodge and then a double tap to dodge roll, which sounds familiar. And uh, the gauntlet does allow a temporary electric shield to pop up that isn't great for really just holding up and defending, but is good for parrying enemies and certain things. The real deal with it is like a push-pull mechanic that it brings. Look at an enemy, hold up your electric gauntlet shield, and push forward or backward to either zip towards the enemy or yank them towards you with an electrical arc that then kind of stuns them and sets them up to kind of be vulnerable to a fun little electrical punching bag combo. It's ridiculous, but it's really fun to zap enemies and then punch them into like a bloody pulp. The game has a skill tree that's pretty decent, although I, I wish you earned points more consistently. It's, it's a pretty slow trickle, but you get nice little building blocks on top of the base combat, like uh, more bullets, different types of damage, more aerial damage, special types of hits and maneuvers, and it's overall a solid skill tree, even if it develops a bit slow at first, like I said, but there's a lot of cool stuff on there, and there's quite a few little things to the combat that you might like and embrace more. Juggling an enemy up in the air with your revolver or like a fun dodge to big Superman punch combo that is really satisfying. The combat is good overall. And like I said, you get more weapons along the way that really shake things up consistently along with cool moves to burn an energy meter on. And along with the skill tree, you're also collecting money out in the world to spend on weapon upgrades. And uh, also you can find skins for your clothing and your gun. There is a move or two that doesn't feel quite right though. Uh, for me, the ground pound super with electricity was kind of finicky and would sometimes weirdly cancel out for no reason. I couldn't really figure that out. Uh, but also the finishing moves themselves aren't really very satisfying sometimes. Some of them are cool, but uh, a lot of them lack weight or punch or anything very cool about them. It's a small complaint, but still. Combat is solid. Like I said, I like it a lot. Is it a masterpiece? I don't know, man, but it's fun and it builds in nice, clever ways with more moves and more enemy complications. That's personal preference though, I'm a bit forgiving. I'll admit it can be a little messy at times and you know, Jesse's a chunky boy. And I mean, even after the new God of War games, the close to the shoulder camera angle isn't everyone's favorite. And I think for some, they still might find the game a little repetitive after a while. Not necessarily because it dries up mechanically, but because you might tend to find what works for you in combat and just stick with those moves. I know I definitely found myself doing that, at least towards the end where things get a little more complicated and a little more challenging. Still, like I keep saying, it, it's decent combat with a good amount of challenge. The game has multiple difficulty modes and I definitely recommend taking advantage of that. Because with this specifically, it's a bit more fun when you're really kept on your toes. Uh, now, just as consistently as you're given new tools, the environments are really varied. There's a country western town, a a desert canyon, a snowy mining facility in the mountains, spooky woods, otherworldly facilities, and more. The, the game is constantly throwing you into some really cool, colorful, and really different areas with every single level, as well as some cool hub areas. Story-wise, it's just kind of like, hey, you have to go here to do this. It doesn't really matter too much, but hey, it looks cool and it shakes things up good. Where the game, unfortunately, is really dry is the actual layouts of the environments themselves. Like, you know, walk through a corridor or a skinny narrow area and then uh, find yourself in an open area like arena style area and fight some enemies and then move on <laughs> every so often jesse will swing across a ledge or shimmy across something but really it all really boils down to walk straight in a simple area maybe turn left and find a treasure chest with some money in it then turn around and keep going then find a big area fight enemies and then rinse and repeat the combat like i said is challenging but any other time in the game when you're doing anything else it's kind of like you're on autopilot if you've played a lot of games. Uh, this is something that even when these types of games were all the rage, some of them really struggled with it. And I was hoping Evil West now in 2022 would have a little bit more to it in terms of level design and just variety in terms of like what you're doing when you're not fighting. Cause this is where it might fall a bit short for some people. Like I said, I'm forgiving just because I like the fresh, almost oldish school simplicity, but you may not as much. It does end up re 
using some enemies quite a bit and it's a bummer towards the end, but at the very least, there are some good boss battles here and there that I did enjoy. Uh, the story didn't amount to too much, but it was light and fun and I was just interested enough, but I actually found myself interested in the world building. Uh, I ended up reading every little bit and piece of info with the collectibles I picked up. I don't always do that in games, but this silly little world did enough to draw me in, I guess. I think ultimately, I wish there was just a bit more to Jesse's character. As cool as he looks, he really didn't do much to stand out for me at all in any way, other than just some one-liners here and there. I almost wish they went like a little more cartoonish with him because everything else in the world is wild and over the top and he's just kind of like, a guy who just happens to be dressed like an insanely awesome comic book character. Now you can finish the game in like nine to like maybe 12 hours, depending on the difficulty. There's also a permadeath mode along with the difficulty modes I mentioned earlier. So good luck with that. Also, there is full co-op. You can play the entire thing in co-op with a friend, apparently. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to test that. I didn't have anybody, but uh, for this type of game, it might feel good as a mindless playthrough with a buddy, like, uh, you know, maybe like how you would co-op Resident Evil 5 back in the day. So th that length ain't much, and the simple, older, kind of Xbox 360, PS3 style of play might not really be your thing. So it is a tough sell especially if you're on a budget, but really one I enjoyed playing through, like some good old fashioned video game junk food. I may not remember it for years to come, but I cherished most of the hours I played with it, you know? There's gore, there's action, there's gross spooky stuff, and a good amount of silly weirdness. And it's just a good old fashioned, flawed, fun, simple action game. They don't make a ton like these anymore, so again, I'm biased in terms of just like being happy to have something like this. But ultimately, that's where I'm at. Hopefully, I described it to you enough and the gameplay helped you out, because as you know, this is a before you buy. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion, and now I want to hear yours down in the comments. Have you been looking forward to this game? Do you know what you're getting into with it? Are you glad it's not full priced? Let's talk anything Evil West down in the comments. What game from the PS3 360 era would you, you know, most likely compare this to? I'd love to hear what you think down there, but if this helped you out, maybe informed your purchase, clicking the like button's all you gotta do. It really helps us out. But as always, I'm Jake Baldino. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.